This test has no validity. None whatsoever. I'm telling you, this has no, absolutely no validity. The most frequently used tests in the world have no validity. <laughs> this has face validity. Fully face validity. And it may have some validity, we just never tested it. Okay, because it was written under the concept of, this is what Cosmo, Cosmopolitan magazine generally will give you. Those are the most frequently used tests in the world, the ones in Cosmo. And frequently somebody will come in and say, well, I took that test in Cosmo and wow, this means I have a 130 IQ. This test has no validity, but take it anyway. This is a test from the book, Walk Like a Chameleon, Animal Instincts That'll Change Your Life. And when I say it has no validity, again, it might have validity. It seems to have validity. But the critical incident stress debriefing really had no validity when, it's, when it started. It had no validity for what it said it did. This is a really good technique. Create some test, have your person take it, and then it'll simulate conversation for days, for days. Just make it have face validity so it makes sense. You know, don't, don't make it, well, uh, when I go to a donut shop, I like uh, jelly donuts. Don't, don't do it that way. So take the test. It takes about 10 minutes, probably longer to score than does anything else. Take the test, and let's just sort of figure out what's going on. And then I'll explain the theory behind the test. One of the things that bothered me about psychology is that we tend to believe that everybody's going to be treated the same. That every kind of thing that we talk about or do is going to work with, different, with the same people. So that we can say one thing to one person, say the same thing to the other person, they're both going to have the same effect. I started being really bothered by that, particularly in trauma situations. I was the guy that got called in on uh, the post office shootings and things like that. And I would start to find that there were different ways of people reacting and different ways that you needed to treat them. So in my reading on trauma, I basically looked at the ways that people reacted to trauma. And this was back in 2000, 2001. And all of a sudden, it occurred to me that we almost have to start personality typing people before we can really know how to work with them. So I started reading about the different personality types of trauma, and nobody had really put it together. Although there was one article, and I don't remember who it was by, that talked about the chemical reactions to trauma in different people. And I thought that was very, very interesting. He had six different types. I went through the experience, and I found there are eight different types of reactions to trauma. But I wanted to write a self-help book, something that would be interested in the general public, that uh, Penguin uh, was our publisher at the time, was my publisher at the time. So I needed to come up with something that would sell. So I started looking at animal patterns the patterns of different animals, and how that related to trauma. So really the animal patterns is sort of trying to figure out how to put this nosology into something that made sense to people who would read self-help. So I came up with eight different types of trauma, of ways people react to trauma, or eight different types of people. There were the avoiders, the clingers, blender, combiner, caretaker, asserter, gamer, and attacker. And we really had to work on all these words, and we worked, I worked with them basically with an editor from Penguin Putnam. Avoiders. Want to turn the light out, Tip? Avoiders are animals like deer, Animals like rabbits, 
like chipmunks, the minute they hear trauma or the minute they see something coming around, they start to run. They want to get out of there. They're naturally prey animals and they want to make sure they're not killed. So they run and get away. <laughs> How do I get this out of here, Jim? Uh, just a question on the corner, I think. How do you put it down and close it? No. 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 I mean, I you have to go close it. Gary, do you know how to close it? Yeah. I always forget. Here, for a second. First. Ah. ah. Very good. Thank you. Avoiders are very good at handling stress because they don't have any stress. And the way they handle life without stress is they overorganize. So before they come on a trip to like teach, they are really practiced over and over and over and over. They really work at it. And they get it organized to the point where everything is going to go smoothly for them. <laughs> the problem with avoiders is when they get caught with that stress and they can't overorganize it. When something happens quickly, they start to panic. They get very anxious. They tend to be people that get worried about things in advance, well, well in advance of them happening. Blenders, or clingers. Blenders. I'm going, wait, those are, those are wrong animals. See, I actually figured out the animal. Blenders have a tendency to blend. They, they, they are good at changing their personality to fit the situation. They're like the walking stick, like the chameleon, like the penguin who's bottom. When they're down swimming in the water, their bottom looks like the sky. And their top, when they're swimming, actually looks like the ocean. They blend in. They very much blend in. This butterfly actually looks like the monarch butterfly, which is poisonous. They blend in. They have figured out patterns to make it so they can blend in. And, and they're very good mediators. They're very good people at, at putting together uh, mediation packages, at, at figuring out group X is saying this and group Y is saying this. Let's find the medium ground. Very good at blending with the background. Clingers have a tendency to latch on to somebody. Like the dung beetle that follows behind elephants, herds of elephants, just to be able to eat. They're back, they're dung. Like the remora fish, which attaches to underneath the fish. They're very, very good at handling situations by finding a strong host and latching onto it. Now in trauma, this means this is a person that's going to take to being around other people very quickly. Their treatment is going to be very different than other people because you're going to have to work with them with somebody else. The one problem they have is they tend to get too attached. Clingers are the best partners. Very faithful, very loving, because they need to keep you healthy.
but they become a little bit overly attached. And sometimes they become quite a bit of a nuisance, particularly if you're the one that they're attaching to. Combiners are like the dog, like the ant. They're, they're good at working with other people. A combiner is a person that just loves to form teams, loves to work through situations with a team of people. And it doesn't matter their role in the team. They just love to be part of this team, like the good faithful dog. He just loves to be part of a team. He's not clinging, but he's being part of a team. He's working, working at being part of the team. Combiners are the best people when you need team put together. They're all usually very affable. They're very happy usually. The problem is they tend to gossip a lot. A good portion of our police officers are combiners. A good portion of our police officers are combiners. Caretakers, like the dolphin, the building squirrel, bee, bees. Caretaker is good at taking care of other people. They like working with other people. They like taking care, being the motherly person. Heather in our class told a story at a French restaurant we went to. I told you I was going to use this, Heather. She was telling this story about she was in a motorcycle accident where a uh, cable came down. Her boyfriend ducked. She's on the back of a motorcycle, and she got caught by the neck. And she said, Everything was going in slow motion. But the only thing she could think about was her boyfriend. Was he all right? Meanwhile, she's being dragged back. She's being dragged back. She also made the comment that this guy gets off the bike, comes running back, and starts screaming at the person behind her, the person who knocked the cable down. So she was the caretaker. She was worried about him. He wasn't worried about her. She was worried about him. He was an asserter. He was a guy that just wanted to start a fight, defend his property. He wasn't worried whether she was alive or dead. He was just going to make sure he could get his point across. A lot of our cops are asserters also. Remember the phrase, better to get your way than make your point? That's usually the problem. They have to make their point. Animals like skunks, <laughs> porcupines. Let me tell you a story about porcupines. Porcupines have sex with their partners 365 days a year. I don't know how the hell they do it, but they have sex. What's that? They hang from trees. They mate with what? They hang from trees. They hang from trees. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the blowfish, what they make fugu out of. <laughs> the blowfish. The bell. The um, howler monkeys. I love the howler monkeys. The howler monkeys are in uh, some of the islands, the Caribbean islands. And what they tend to do is when somebody enters their territory, see, assertors are very territorial. When somebody enters their territory, they shit in their hand and they throw it at them. <laughs> Basically, say, hey, get out of here. I'm going to throw shit at you. An asserter will always attack you if you come near them. They're very territorial. I think Hillary Clinton is an asserter. She's a nice person until you confront her. She just seems to be a really nice person, but then when she's confronted, she goes, she's very assertive. She comes really at you.
Assertives are good at getting things done. They are really good at getting things done. They go at it 100%. The problem is when somebody starts standing in their way or putting up a block or asking for information, they sort of go on the attack. Gamers. I'm a gamer caretaker. Gamers like to make things fun. They like to have their own space, but they like to do things in such a fashion that they, everything's sort of a game to them. They're very, very good at finding new experiences, new people for those experiences, making lots of friends. Very, very good. The problem with gamers is when you start putting reins on them. They feel very uncomfortable. When you start saying, hey, you can't go that far, or that was not appropriate, they start feeling a little uncomfortable. Gamers are good partners for Think. Clingers. Hmm? Clingers. Clingers, okay. And? Not so good for, not perfect for clingers. Who's the best partner for a gamer? Or avoider. Avoider, why? Because they'll balance each other out. Yeah, avoiders won't do anything brand new or, or great adventurous until they get into the face of a gamer and they go, okay, well, I'll try that. It's safe. Attackers. The Wolverine can bring down a brown bear. The Wolverine sets up a area about a mile square and anything that comes in that area will kill immediately. Wolverines don't know the end. See the difference between an attacker and an asserter is once the pressure stops from an inserter, they go, okay, hey, that's cool, let's make friends again. Once the pressure stops from an attacker, they wanna go straight at him, 100%. They wanna go straight at him. Most of the people that we're gonna find in forensic psych tend to be attackers. This is something I can send you. Personality, the instinct, any animal type. Now, let's say that we believe this. And again, there's a lot of research support for it. It's just in, in different ways. Let's say we believe this. A person comes in with a trauma, how do you talk to them? How do you talk to a person that comes in tra traumatized? Or a person that comes in for therapy? How would you talk to a clinger? What kind of phrases would you say to a clinger? Think about it. Huh? Okay, I'm here for you, she says. Maybe speaking as like we to kind of group us right. together. A lot of we. Initially, you might let them become more dependent on you. Hey, we can get through this. Don't worry about that. Or, you know, this is going to bring you and your husband together closer. Or you and your wife together closer. Very good. What kind of comments would you make to an avoider? What do avoiders like to do? Heather? Oh, I'm sorry. I th I, it was like bidding at a uh, art auction. I thought you were. <laughs> Avoider? Yeah. 
What kind of? What's that? What's that? You make you tie them to the chair and make them listen. <laughs> well, I, I think tying them to the chair is probably a little extreme, but uh, avoiders. What do you, what do avoiders want to do the most? Organize. Organize. So how do you do this for when you're working with an avoider? Maybe more handouts, more structured things. Structured things, getting them to say, hey, let's put this down on paper. Let's get this organized. Does this make sense to you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Just pure common sense. But it, it works tremendously well with people going through trauma. Blenders, what do you do with blenders? Support groups, that's very, very good. What else do you do with blenders? You give them examples of other people who are doing well so that they can move along that path. You know, Danny seems to be doing, doing pretty well with this. Uh, tell me about what's going on. That you, you know, maybe you can end up being like Danny, working like Danny. Give him ways to look at himself and go in that direction. Combiners, what do you do with combiners? What do you do with a team player? You give him a team. Group therapy. Group, to work with. Group or as an individual therapy, what would you put what would you do with him? Um. You know, I know some other cops from uh, Arizona who were having this trouble. That kind of thing. You know, all right, support groups, support groups of uh, cops. Or statements like, how do you talk to a combiner? We. Hmm? We. We. But you also want to emphasize, hey, we got to get you back in shape because you, you're part of a team. They need you. They need you. Very good. This is the easiest one, caretaker. What do you say to a caretaker? Heather, I'm going to make you go with this one. What do you say to a caretaker? <laughs> Anybody knocked off a motorcycle <laughs> riding down the road to most likely her death, what do you say to a caretaker? All she's thinking about is her boyfriend. Very much so. The people that depend on you. How is this affecting your children? How is this affecting your husband? How is, how is it affecting the people she takes care of? Caretakers tend to be thinking always through a filter of other people. How does it affect them? In the ways that it's affecting them, what can we do to get you back to functioning Back to functioning so you can be there for your family. Asserter. What do you do with an asserter? You never miss their session. You know, it's that, that's their hour. That's true. That's really true. I never thought of that. That's really true. They get very, and if you're late, they get very offended. Yeah, so. That's true. Actually, that, that's very true. Yeah. Maybe uh, stress how their, their stuff is falling behind. They've got to get it together to get back to work, to get their things done. Stuff's piling up, waiting for them to take care of. Okay. That, that's a possibility. Um, one of my concerns about that is you, when you put pressure on an asserter, they, they go into attack mode. And when you take pressure off, they're more affable. So what do you do with somebody like that? You ask them what they think they should do, they can do to resolve this issue. Right. You cannot dictate to them okay. what, what they're going to do. And remember, a lot of our cops are asserters. 
And I think that's part of the culture, part of the, the choice they make to become police officers. A lot of our cops are surter caretakers. Gamers. What do you do with a gamer going through trauma? Very good. Why? Because that's what they relate to. What else? What are gamers like? Huh? No, new experiences. New experiences. Hey, this shooting's a, it's a bad thing, but it's a new experience for you. You're going through a brand new experience. Well, I don't need experiences like that. Yeah, but you've got it. You've got it. Now, where can you go with that? You might spin off, and this is what I like to do with gamers, is talk about, you know, you're going to get a lot of attention right now because you went through a shooting. You're getting a lot of attention. And people get a lot of attention to do one of two things. Either they shy away, and they sort of run and hide, and then all that attention's gone, or they put themselves out in the forefront. And they start talking about their shooting and talking about things that they can do, and they help other cops that way. They get new experiences, and a lot of them can get promotions, which is true. A lot of people go through shootings can get promotions, particularly if they're heroic type shootings, because they're in the forefront. How can we use that attention that you're getting positively? Attackers? What do you say to an attacker? Okay. Ask you to figure out how, what they did win. Yeah. What do you think you won out of this? What did you get out of this? Okay. I would more say to an attacker, let's attack the problem. Let's go after it. Let's go straight at it. You know, some people I say back off, you, you got to go straight at it. Let's figure out what we can do. Let's break down the problem and attack it one piece by piece. I don't want to go over this too long because you're going to get, hopefully, did you get the books? Everybody got the books? But I, what I want you to do is to read it. It's a self-help book, okay? It's not written for you. But read it to think about the things you can do at therapy because these are sort of personality types. This is sort of will help you a lot in therapy if you figure out how it is that's going to change me as a therapist. Not how I'm going to change that person, but what is it going to change what I do with that person? People respond when you start getting at that lower level, when you start getting at that level of this is how they survive. These are survival strategies. When somebody's in survival, they're going to go into one of these strategies. All animals do. All animals do. Some an most animals are more in survival than we are as humans. They don't fight for survival. All animals go into survival. How do I talk to that person when they're in survival? How do I talk to that person to get them out of survival mode? 